Good morning. Never gonna leave, never gonna leave your side. Oh, Copyright strike. <laughs> You know what? It doesn't matter how many people ditch out on me. You got to get in line to ditch out on me, on JD Nyjah. <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to change hats. That one's too, too hot. Oh, it's beautiful morning here. And, uh, Dana Point, California. Beautiful Doheny State Beach. World famous Doheny State Beach. Let me make sure I'm going. All right. Um, all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the Only Begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I was just going into 1 John 4, chapter 4. We are talking about love. Love, love, love. And... Um, You know that the power, the power of love is the power that gets us to continue in this work, even though we're we're broken. Do you think when our Savior walked the earth, do you think he was in a, do you think he was in a happy mode? It never said, and Jesus jumped for joy. So, love isn't always about um, that happy feeling, that earthly feeling. But anyway, um, I wanted to finish off in John 4.4 4 a little. Get, get, at least finish this one section, love one another. Because... Um, let me pray. Heavenly Father, bless this message. Bless the ears that hear it. Heal the sick. Heal the, the downhearted. Heal the traumatized. Let them know that you're there and that every suffering that you went through was to his glory. So that when we get there and he dries all tears and he lifts us up in glory along with him. For standing by him and believing in him and knowing that his love endures forever that all these all this time that we've gone through this will seem like a brief second and it'll just be a remembrance of how wonderful he was to walk with us through all this pain and all this hurt to bring us back in reconciliation to the Heavenly Father amen Maybe that's why I don't talk about love very much because it breaks my heart. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, John, 1 John 4, 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify testify our testicles <laughs> men men only men testify cuz men are of the truth women are they can't testify of things of God or man because they are our possession they need to testify and I was telling my the woman I dealt with yesterday I said can I get a witness can I get a witness? You know, these women have um, betrayed me over and over again. And um, I I was trying to explain to her that I never knew, I, I, I didn't know the betrayal of a woman. And so I always trusted that... Um, 
a woman that I committed to was going to um, stand by me. And um, I was, I was wrong. So when we think of testifying, we're, we're talking about men, only men, only men can testify of things that are true because women's hearts aren't true. Women, evil, evil turn on Adam at every, at every turn. And so that's when I, when I come on this channel and I talk about the Lord and I talk about these things, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I'm just trying to get the truth out. And the truth is, is that, um, women will follow you if you have enough money and you have enough power and you, and you, and you bow to the, what they want and you do mostly what they want. Um, a woman's not going to follow you just because you have the spirit of the Lord. Believe you me, I've, I've, I've tested it a few times. Um, they don't know what it is. They can't testify. They have no nuts. So some of you are probably going to, I'm probably going to lose some more subscribers. That might be what, um, what's happening. And if you women, if you women don't believe that I love you, um, know that I love you like the Lord loves me. I love you even though you're not right. Just like the Lord loves me even though I'm not right. And that's what makes mercy so wonderful. But anyhow, um, just know that... Um, Testifying is of men. It's, it's a man. It's a man thing. All of a sudden, the crows are coming around. Um, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, hello, GMS. I just pulled this. I just pulled this scripture up because I wanted to go into the love thing. And if you want some love letters, go to First, Second, and Third John. Beat it. I'm going to have to get rid of these guys. Beat it! Let me see if I can <laughs> throw a cup at him. I'm trying to get rid of the crows! I'll get it! Don't worry, bro! Fuck. <laughs> like, I, like I'm a litter bug. That's funny picked up more trash I, I picked up I can honestly say I picked up more trash by hand than anyone <laughs> I, I don't know I'd like to see I'd like to see someone who's picked up more trash than me I worked for the city for 10 years I worked for the state I've worked <laughs> I've done gardening for for most of my life maintenance I was telling the lady the other day there's a lot of trash on the beach because we, we had rain and a bunch of trash came out. And she was saying, why don't the locals pick up trash? I'm like, I don't know why they don't, but I know why I don't. I've picked up my share of trash. But anyhow, that was funny. Just as soon as I threw out the cup, here comes people that, to bust me, right? So anyway, let's go back to scripture. Enough about trash. Um, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. Come on, sir. Do, do what? GMS doesn't go into, into the love letters from John? It says it right there. He's talking about love one another. This is a, see, I can't even go into scriptures without narking these guys. Because everything, every, everywhere I go, it talks about you got to believe the Spirit of God came into Jesus. It's 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 enough to twist your mind that these guys stand on that stupid, idiotic Joseph. Uh, 
And we have known and believed that, verse 16, John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that, damn crows. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Wherein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So, I, I know it. I know what the scripture is going to say after this. I know exactly, or, or I have a good idea. You know what it's going to say? They didn't believe him. They didn't love him. They turned their back on him. His own brothers put him on the cross. His own friends. His own neighbors. Where'd you get those wounds? In the house of my friends. So, am I looking for friends out here? I know I have no friends out here. You know why? Because it says that, wherein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness. And I went into that too, the perfect, the perfect servant. I've gone into that. It's no fun. It's no fun doing these lessons unless um, we can get on one page, because these these biblical realities, these truth, these truths, <laughs> the truth, the truth, the truth is these truths all together make up the truth, not this truth. This truth. What truth is that? Is it that truth, or is it the other truth? Anyhow, um, it's probably going to say, let's say that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. Did people understand Jesus when he was here? A lot of them didn't understand him, but they followed anyway. And so that's what I would hope on this channel is you might not understand everything I say. And I'm speaking in boldness when I say, you women have no balls, so so shut up. Your testimony means nothing. That's boldness. Because it's true. Just as Jesus was in the world, if you're going to testify of him, you testify of him as a man. From a woman to a man. The women that that testified of Jesus testified of him with truth and in, in, in spirit. There's not enough of you women out there to, um, to make a difference. If there's one, if I find one in my life, Solomon said it. So here we go. We're going to lose some, some more of you women. You just, you just come on because you like, you just think I'm cute. Um, Solomon said, I looked for a righteous man out of a thousand. I found one. And then I looked for a righteous woman and out of a thousand, I found none. So there's that. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So these guys, I heard Apostle Ram love. I, I listen to see what they're saying so I can have something to talk about as far as um, correcting correcting them. They they say, oh, Yahawashai or whatever looks just like his father, Yahawa. If you've seen me, you've seen my father. Um, we've never seen Jesus. Have you ever seen him? I've never seen him. I don't know what he looks like. And that's what John's, that's what John's trying to say to a lot of these people is, um, you're reading this book, you're reading this testimony that I'm giving you, and I'm saying, what's he saying? If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he has loveth not his brother whom he has seen. 
How can he love God whom he has not seen? How can these guys say that they know what Jesus looks like? He might have been a black man when he went up. He might have came down as a total. The, the spirit, the spirit does, isn't going to look like a black dude. The spirit's going to, we're going to see him as he is. Not as he was or not how you think he lo is. And that's where a lot of people are really off. And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. So let's go back to um, the book of John. We're going to look into um, the world, the world. Do you love the world? I think it's in here. 14. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. The world will hate Jesus' followers. Yep. Let's just do this. It's easy. I like I like this one too, but um, 14, 27. Um, yeah, let's let's go with this one. Um, Judas asked, not Iscariot, the other Judas. <laughs> Let's go down here real quick. The truth of God. The word truth is used in scriptures two way. True as con contrasted with false. This truth, that truth, or the truth. This truth could be false. That truth could be false. The truth is never false. It's always true. So when these guys say, coming into this truth, they're giving themselves away as blasphemers. True as contrasted with false and genuine as contrasted with unreal. I say that all the time. What? Where's the reality? It's unreal. The things they say are not real. There is no such thing as this truth. This truth is the truth. But when they say it, they're saying about some truth that's not true because they, they don't have the right doctrine. If they're saying things that aren't true, that truth isn't the truth of the Bible. If they're saying it's true that Joseph is the father of Jesus and the Gentiles can't make it, that's that truth. That's, that's an unreal, that's a truth that they might believe in, but that's not the truth, the truth of God. Um, although both apply to God when we speak of the truth of God, normally his genuineness is contrasted with false gods of other religions. The scriptures, in this sense, declare him the only true God. Damn crows. Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> the only true God. When Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, he challenged them to evaluate the genuineness of the Lord of Baal. The true God answered by fire. Maybe some, maybe people didn't like fire. I don't know. I don't know what I said wrong. Two people dropped out. I don't know why. This is the place to be, people. Because the Lord is God, we are obligated to him in all his demands. Comforter. Greek word parakletos. Parakletos. Remember that from Bible study? The parakletos, the the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, means one called alongside to help. Thank you, Brother Valentino. <laughs> Hayanan Valentino. Um, we're helping each other move forward. Um, hence the idea of Comforter. The Holy Spirit is called another Comforter because this is also one of Christ's titles. He is known as the Comforter. The Father is also known as the God of all comfort. Though those in the early church often endured persecutions, they found their comfort in the Holy Spirit. Today, Christians can find comfort in the Holy Spirit when trials come. We were just talking about that in the last video. How um, Compared to the trials I went through earlier in my life, my life is very simple now. And I don't have a lot of trials, but the trials that I do have have more to do with the um,
unbelief of the world and how the world sees us and how we see the world and how different those two visions are. The world has its vision of us and we can, we see them pretty clear, but they don't see us. So um, in John 14, uh, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, Oh, what Judas said was, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Because the Lord tell, told him, um, He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by the Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So this, see how my messages follow? It's not me, it's the Lord. And that's what people don't understand. They're like, he thinks the Lord's worth, he, he, he's, he's probably just doing that. I'm not doing it. The Lord's doing it. He's talking about the love of the Father, just like he was talking about. He's the same dude. He's the he's the beloved of the Lord, John. The one that the Lord loves. And Judas said unto him, Not as curious, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? Ouch. That's that's painful. Ouch. Why? Why and how? And the Lord answered and said, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. In other words, when I lay in bed for 12 hours, I don't have anything else to do. What am I going to go to the do? Go, go to the bar and get drunk and be with a bunch of fools that don't know the Lord? It was fun for a while, but it's getting really ugly now. And... and I, I have women I could go hang out with and it's not, it's, it's not that anymore. Um, he that loveth me, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which he hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. He's saying, what you're hearing out of my mouth, it isn't me. Just like I just said, this isn't. This isn't me trying to, to get you to think, oh, he's got the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm planning this all out so that you think that, how did that, how does he, why is he talking about love again in this other, because the Lord's doing it, not me. And that's what he just said. It's not, it's not me. It's, it's my brother and the father that are, have sent me onto you so that you could see these things and hear these words. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Again, this is regeneration. How's he going to bring it under remembrance if you haven't heard it before? You know why you've heard it before? Because you've been here before. I've been here before. I've heard these words spoken in the synagogue. I've heard it. For all I know, I heard I was one of the multitudes out there listening. I believe him. I followed him. That's why I'm following him now. It's the same spirit. So that's, this is another example of regeneration for you non, for you reincarnation deniers. And this is this is my one of my only scriptures that I have by memory. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give unto you. Let your heart be tr neither troubled nor afraid. Verse 427 of John. Let me read it. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid. My, my Baptist, Four Square Baptist pre pastor gave me that one back when I was going through some hard times. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. 
If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for in my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before I come to pass that when it come to pass, you might believe. So now I'm back again. You're back again. If you believe in what you heard back then, these, these words will come into your remembrance. You'll be hearing me speak them through the Holy Spirit, through the Comforter. It should be a comforting thing to you. Um, it's hard to it's hard to hear, but if you listen, it'll comfort your spirit and you'll and you'll rest. Whereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Let me see what I got. I'm out.